Zephyr. Look at Zephyr. All right, guys. Hey, Connor, how's it going? What I have here is my old 2018, geez, ICD-10 book. And it's a pretty good cheat sheet for a lot of the medical guidelines as far as rules and regulations, definitions and things. What happens first in certain things? Um, where I put like publication 104, probably a lot of stuff that's probably not needed for CPC, but I wanted to make sure I had it, you know, what's covered and which and what claim goes where. Lots of abbreviations. Status indicators, what does that mean? Bill type, CCR, just a lot of stuff. I had put it in the ICD-10 before I took my um, CPC exam thinking I was smart, but um, since you're, when you're doing your CPC exam, you are mostly in your CPT book, and really, I didn't even have time to even open this book and look at any of this information. So, it's really better if you find places for this kind of stuff in your um, CPT book, in the front of it, before you get to your um, um, E&M section. That would be a lot better. And don't write everything in one color. You can see that this is better because it's like separated by subject, at least when your eyes are going through it. It's not all one blob of whatever. Um, it probably would have been better if I'd have separated some of the words and stuff in, in different colors, but maybe I ran out of ink. Who knows what I was doing several years ago, but there is more space, of course, in some of these books, but putting all this information into other books is can be, and look, I didn't even use the note page. You know? <laughs> what, what are you doing, Jennifer? <laughs> I don't know, but I use the back cover. Um, anyway, um, you only have 10 questions out of the ICD-10 usually. I mean, you might have guidelines, of course, that are going to be in here too, but um, back in the day, the guidelines were in the back of the book. Um, it was crazy where they had some of this stuff listed, but since at least 100 of your questions are going to be in CPT, I really recommend if you're going to write anything that's important for regulation and laws that you utilize any white spaces you have up here in the front of your book before you get to the red or pink e and m section um, to use those areas for sure i know i have some in here but i'm gonna do a better job for 2022 of showing you which pages you can utilize for some of your information up here um, for that kind of stuff. Anyway, I think it's best just to keep it all in CPT, but you can put a lot of information in these books just in case. Connor, when's your test coming up? When is it? Hey Jess, 
How's it going? I know yours is like next weekend, right? Right? I got notes somewhere around here on my desk somewhere. I also found some of my other stuff that I do um, when a home health agency or some agency fails an audit, they have to come in with an action plan to correct their things that they missed. And it's one of the things that I do for um, outside companies um, as a contract worker or being able to work from home. I'll go through their audit and see what they missed on their audit. They'll usually have some sort of checkoff sheet. You know, what did you miss? What did you get on your score? And then whatever this is that they failed, I'll just Google it, figure out what it is, CHAPS audit, this particular thing that they didn't miss, and then make a policy and procedure for it and have them sign off on it for their agency and put it in a little binder form and show that they corrected their actions. It's something to think about later on in your career. A lot of these things aren't very difficult. And if you're in medicine for a long time, or any time at all, um, most everything's available on Google. You can figure it out. Find ways to do side hustles. Let's see. Yep, next Saturday. I want to test this month, but I keep putting it off. Homework, because I have no clue how to do it. What homework do you have no clue on how to do it? Let me know what homework you're having trouble with. Maybe I can figure out a way to help you. And let me bring up something that we can go over. Whoops, come on. Come on, computer. Cancel, I don't want to get rid of that. Computer, pay attention to me. Do what I say. Come on. There we go. Show y'all some of the work I'm doing on the 2022 guidelines to um this is going to be the ENM section. Um, it's going to have the ENM codes in the middle, and then it's going to show you exactly what to highlight. <clears throat> and then on either side, it'll either have test questions with the answer in a different color than the rest. I don't know if you can tell with the color differences, but C is the answer on this one, and then other examples where it's just coded out for you with the actual code with the scenario um, lots of examples um, I'm trying to do one for every code what modifiers you can't use on certain codes if I know it um, any tips I have for coding that particular situation and just going through here and adding as much as I can to 
everything, even if there's ICD-10 codes. The examples, I'm trying to stay within AAPC's examples they've given out, or I'm using the um, C, the, the, um, the insider view or the CPT assistant where they give out the rationale and examples in it that show you how to code it. I'm trying to stay right there. I'm not using anything from Quizlets or, or whatever, just in case it's incorrect. Um, I'm trying to stay within the professional area, but we'll see. Um, Just marking up stuff like we do with the blue stars and the red stars so that we know that what we, what we need to keep here do not report what we do need to keep. But I still got quite a bit I need to add uh, data to, but I at least have it all down and typed and then adding in my blue and red stars now. Um, Medicare codes, even adding those, even if they're hit picks that might be used for prolonged services. Medicare has their own one, um, that kind of thing. And then I got to do the out of sequences. Yep, 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 yep. More red stars, more examples been going in here, but I still got quite a few to go through uh, doing the charts if they're needed and then back here I've got some modifier examples at the end after all the ENMs and then just general instructions for um, how to do the process of elimination more things about how long the test is um, that there's going to be 10 questions in E and M and then it goes in depth which 10 questions would you want, do you need to make sure you need to know? Like, if you were in the E&M section, what areas in that E&M section do you need to make sure that you need to know about, including the modifiers? But I'll, it's going to go through the whole entire section. So anesthesia has its top 10. Um, Intignitary is going to have its top 10 what to look out for, um, what medical terminology, 10 anatomy questions. I'm going to add to that some more vocabulary that we're going to have. But, and I may even add to the ENM section our test, what's on test A, what's on test B, what's on test C, or what's on people's online exams. Maybe that could go towards the end of this section too. That way we can have it all into one section. That way if they get ENM, you'll have a big overview of everything. But it may end up being too big for downloads. We'll see. Anyway, that's where I'm at here. Oh, Honey Bunny is texting me. Hope you're having a nice evening. Aw, he's still at Hobby Lobby. Working his tail off. Business is picking up, but but staff is not coming in, so that's always the issue. Uh, it's hard to, uh, especially with uh, sniffles and COVID, and then concerts are coming back in town because we live really close to Laughlin, Nevada. Even though we're in Arizona, Laughlin's 15 minutes this way, and then California is 15 minutes that way. But we're in Arizona, so we're really close. But when the concerts come to town, like um, all those country singers, gosh, um, who was that female that was just here the other day? Sorry, I'm going to blank out on it. But anytime there's a really popular star in town, um, everybody's suddenly sick and can't come into work. <laughs> but they're at the concert sharing their Facebook pictures. So it's always a struggle for him to keep people in the office. We have, I wanted to make sure that we, 
since we have some people going to be taking their exam in the next couple of weeks, the integumentary system, be sure you know how to do multiple things. What if they have a lot of skin tags? They also have a lesion that needs a punch biopsy. Which one do you do first? Which one do you code first? Um, you're going to need to make sure that you do the biggest and most stressful surgery coded first. Um, there's going to be fine needle aspirations versus punch biopsies versus lesions. Don't forget that um, even there's going to be like INDs where you do an incision and you drain it like that pimple popper lady. Oh my God, her cottage cheese stuff is just awful horrifying to watch but that happens in the office um which one would you code first if you had an ind and a punch biopsy and shave biopsy be sure you know those kind of things it's going to be that you need to do the bigger and the worse procedure more instruments Sutures are going to go before biopsies, um, anything like that. Make sure you do the bigger the procedure first. Just like with um, the pregnancies, when you have one baby born vaginally and then one baby born by C-section, same thing. Let's see if we can do one of these process of eliminations here. Let's see. I gotta get an exam up. around and open up yeah we'll do this exam where are you at that's exam three okay Shrink it down to where we can just get three inches there and that way we can get it all into the same screen. We got 1460 in two there. We're going to keep B and D. Okay. Come on, pen, draw for me. We're going to keep B and D. Well, C is the same. 
here as B. Did I read it wrong? We got 42 and 42, then we'd only need to know if we need to go for 1460 or 15. I still have it on an eraser. That's why. Since these two are the same. <laughs> B and C. Okay. Since that's the same, we don't need to look it up. Let's go to this one since it's the first one. 14, 0, 60. Zero sixty is adjacent tissue, and then fifteen, fifteen, one one, fifteen one one five is under our heading surgery preparation. This one is under adjacent tissue and transfer. I already see, you, did you see that word transfer somewhere? Where did it go? There it is. It's underlined even by my spell check. Um, so we are definitely doing a transfer. So we know it's going to be the 1460. That's the wrong way. We're at eyelids, nose, ears, lips, that kind of thing. We need to know if we're um, doing a recipient or, right, an adjacent tissue transfer. Okay. They're doing a flap. Yeah, we know it's going to be the 1460 anyway. I need to see why an advanced into the primary defect an adjacent tissue transfer of three centimeters yep was taken and advanced into the defect did they do anything else here they did an excision yeah B sure did Our next one hmm well definitely a is going to be our outlier on this one let me get my pen that one's going to be an outlier so it's and I like C and D on this one, right? 04 and 42. Yeah. 11. 11, oh, oh. Eleven oh oh four. We're under debridement, and then eleven oh forty two is under debridement. Also, we need to check our question. We do have a debridement of neurotic tissue. Is the debridement based off of something different? What's the differences between this one? This is abdominal wall, and this one is debridement under genitalia, soft tissue, and it is necrotizing. Is the other one on the ab abdominal necrotizing? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, they're all under the same. Are they all under the same? See how they make you think that um, this 05, this picture, makes you think that you're under another core code? Does that make sense, what I'm looking at? Like, you would, you would think that it's another core code, but anyway. I don't like the pictures while well, they put them in in the wrong spots but this debriefment is under under um, subcutaneous tissue and it doesn't say anything about gangrene right there the only necrotizing is the 04 So, yeah, because of the necro necrotizing, we're definitely going to go with C for that one. Absolutely. This one. Eighty five would be definite outlier, and then the one hundred twenty and twenty five is where I'd go. Nineteen one, nineteen, nineteen what one hundred? We're under the heading of something. What are we under the? We're under breast biopsies. These are all under breast. Yep, breast biopsies. We've got this one, and then we have 20 and 25. Where are they? 20 and 25. So this one's a biopsy, this one's an excision, and this one's an excision. So it's probably gonna be between these two, right? Let's check our question real quick. If they're layering something, doing some sort of sutures, then they probably ended up doing some sort of excision, right? Because a biopsy would not be um, needing any kind of um, suture material. So you can get rid of A, knowing that. So between this one and this one, it's just going to be a size thing, right? This one's open procedure. And this one um, puts in radiological markers, kind of like the seeds they put in for the um, prostate. So we'll just see what they did, which we'll have to go up here to the next thing and see if they placed any markers of any sort in here. Do y'all see anything with markers? They did stain the tissue. Does that stain contain markers? Yep, the stain is a marker. That is going to be what they're talking about. We need to put uh, radiological markers. That would be a really good AKA to add to this particular code. Let me turn on my light so y'all can have a clear picture there. <clears throat> so this radiological marker could end up being an AKA marker I don't have enough room up here equals the M E T H I'm on page 121 at CPT code 19125 M E T H Y L-E-N-E 
blue stained. So our word marker is going to be called that methane thing. for that particular question. So we know D ends up being our answer for this one. And we now can state that when they're talking about the breast lesions, they might use a methylene blue stain that is a marker for these types of questions. And I'll let you see the methastane right there is what we looked for. And there's our codes. And we'll pick D for sure. All right, our next set. Well, 21 and 23 are closer than the 35 and 40, so we'll go there first and see. So 26, 121. is under the heading of excision and then our other one was 23 21 and 23 they're both this fast this removal one's palm only and one's partial palmer partial and palm only. So we need to go from the this one backwards and see what we've got going on. Thank you for the hearts. There's the word, the fasctomy up here. So we know it. We're in the right section. They are doing that, and they're doing the ring, digit, and palmer. So including the proximal interphalangeal joint because this one is doing <laughs> the ring finger and palm you've got a joint just like what I've got messed up here that joint you're seeing the word joint this one means the joint was included. That is your main key term to know whether you're doing this or not. This one will not have a joint in it at all. No joint. It's just tissue. No joint. This one includes joint. So that's our difference with these two. So A is definitely our answer right here. And I know that because we have the F7. You can't, it's going to be the right palm, yes, 
but we also did the joint of that finger. You got to make sure that you don't forget that you're going to need your modifiers for which finger you're doing. Mine are super swollen today because I was busy digging through the garage or sh a shed. I have I was cleaning the garage and the shed, digging out all the Christmas decorations, putting away the Halloween ones. So they'll be there till Thanksgiving is over with, and then I'll put. I always wait till the day after Thanksgiving, and we'll put up the Christmas tree. But I at least have them dug out and put in the front of the shed instead of the back of the shed. Because I had to dig out the Easter. We need rotating sheds that will rotate our inventory around <laughs> based on holidays. Instead of me having to pull everything out to find what I buried last ho holiday. Goodness. I need to come up with an easier way of doing this for sure. Check chat. What did y'all say? Awesome, 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 awesome. Um, let's see, number six. Come on, focus, focus, camera. You can do it, I promise. There we go. All right. We've got three with the same code right here. So we'll get rid of A, right? So we've got three. Two of them have a modifier 50. Modifier 50 is... Uh, cheat sheet. In the front is bilateral. Let's see. I mean, it helps to kind of look to see if you're going to use a bilateral, but you really won't know if the code is going to allow you to use bilateral modifier or not until you get there, really, a lot of times. What are we doing? We're doing da -da -da, palpitations. We do have left and right in that third sentence right there, so we might possibly use that 50 modifier for sure. Um... We need to see if that code is going to need the radiological to go along with it. Um, so let's go on and go to that code. Even though it's in all three, we need to know if we can add a modifier to it or if we need to add radiology to it. So 27096, and the only way we'll find it is in the parenthetical notes. 270, right? Yep. 270. 27096. We got lots of notes in this one, and it does say if you're going to code this one unilaterally, only doing one, then you will add a modifier 50. For bilateral, both sides, um, I'm sorry, the it is a unilateral procedure. It's unilateral. But if you're going to code it bilateral, you're going to add 50 to it. Some parenthetical notes will let you know to use a modifier 50. Also, if you're going to make it into a unilateral or something, I don't A lot of the procedures are already bilateral and you can make them into unilateral by adding a modifier. Anyway, this is not that case, but just be careful. For a bilateral, we are going to use 50 and this one includes imaging already, so we don't need to add a 7.7 to it for sure. We do need to add a modifier 50, so that clears up this one fairly well, really quickly. We know right away. Where's my pen? Come on, mousy. Here we go. We cannot use that, so we can get rid of that one. And we can't use a 51 modifier, so our only answer can be C, for sure. 
All right. This one, we're going to have a difference between 80 and 81. And it looks like this 261 is in three of them. Four of them. Ooh, we don't even have to look up that one. Uh, da, 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 da. We got other modifiers. Lots of modifiers on this one. All right. 2988. 2988. Two nine eight eight. Oh, we are under the heading. Oh gosh, this is the one I did the other day under arthroscope of the knee. This one I did a TikTok on because somebody had asked me. This was on their um test question somewhere online and somebody had asked me on TikTok help and they couldn't figure it out the difference between 80 and 81 is one simple one word there's only one word one of them is and and one of them is or that is the difference between these and once you get past Two nine eight seven seven. I'm on page two oh eight of the CPT book twenty twenty one. Once you get past this code, these are meniscus tears. One thing that you need to be very careful of, and that they kind of sort of have in the wrong spot, is this parenthetical note right here. Is really cool and a good one. When performing an arthroscopic meniscectomy, they're removing it. C80 and 81. So, in this test question, their test question was way smaller than this one that, I, that was in the um, Tiki Talk. But what this one has is a meniscus tear and they need to fix it. So what they're going to be doing is fixing that. But their procedure ended up being a little bit more, but they did the meniscus and they did this S word. They did both of these procedures which they thought they were just going to be fixing this, right? And then they get in here and they do all that stuff. Boy, AAPC threw in a bunch more stuff. Where is my other phone? Pull up her picture real quick on this one. This one was it. It was the reply for help. And I needed to see where is our and and or because um, the and and or is medial and lateral we need to look for those two key terms in all this too because when you get into 80 um, and 81 you need to know those two things we've got lateral listed right here and we have medial listed right there. Those are our other key terms that we needed. That's what I was missing. So for this big note, you just needed this 
synvectomy, minectomy, thing you needed to know if they were doing lateral and medial. They did do both. There. Well, the lateral compartment was deprived, but they looked at the medial, right? So they didn't do the medial, okay? They only looked at it. So when you're doing 80 and 81, if they were both, Debrived, whatever that is. If they were both done that way, it's going to be 80. If it was one or the other, then it's the or one. So for this one, they only did that procedure on one of the medial and lateral areas. So we're gonna keep it at the 81, okay? Oops. Now that we know it's not gonna be A, and we know it's not gonna be D, then all we gotta do is decide which one goes with it based off the diagnoses, I guess. But to I wanted to replying to this report. hold on don't don't be doing my ticky talks <laughs> I wanted to simplify the wording here um, I think they had on her test question that Because of our main wording up here is this is our orthoscopy. Then you've got to add the S word that goes along with it. And that starts over here on the other page but keeps going with these two. This one also does the same thing. So we've got it at OR and then we just need to figure out which one of the diagnosis is correct. Is it going to be the M23221 or 211 is our differences. This one you have to look in two books for the answer instead of one. Get out at least a current year. That's 2020. That's 18. Lord. I got so many books all around. <laughs> this one is 2021. And goodness, does it have some writings in it, y'all? Got some crazy writings. Now, in my front of my CPT book, I do have some common ICD 10 books for this particular section. And I know I have the M thing for the lateral or some sort of meniscus tear in there. I know I have some M stuff written in, but not sure if I have the exact 23221 and 211. I'm pretty sure I just picked one of them and wrote them in, not both. Should probably write both. That way, I'd have it and I wouldn't have to look in the other book. It would be there on exam day. Two, three, two, one, one. We got right knee, and then if I'm in, nope, I'm not in the right spot. Two, three, 
two, three, two, three, two, one, one. We're going over here. That's an old tear. Two, two, one is posteriorly due to an old tear. So we've got posterior and anterior is our two differences posterior and anterior where are we at doesn't say there Lateral. Yeah, we're going to be posterior, aren't we? Where's our posterior? Anterior lateral, but the answer is telling me it's posteriorly, even though that says anteriorly. Oh, it does say anteriorly, two, two, one. So, two, two, one, two, one, one. Two one one. Two one one. It's down. Uh, <laughs> I want to get my degree posteriorly. Yeah, it's posteriorly, Tony. You're right. Y'all want to get a degree in him or in coding? You got your degree in medical billing and I was able to get a job in it. Good, Rachel. Raquel, I mean. That is awesome. Are you still trying to get your CPC to go along with your medical billing and coding degree? Well, you've already got the degree. Do you want the certification to go along with it? For process of elimination on the next one, I get rid of 05. It's way on up there. 26 maybe too, right? I like 15 and 18. 2, 2, 3, 1, 5. 2, 2, 3, 1, 5. So the beginning of this one, I'm going to have my lateral bucket range. I just put the M23 range in there. I didn't put the 221 or the 211, but those seem to be pretty common, posterior and anterior, um, ones that are commonly used. It might not be a bad idea 
to write out the differences on those for that one. So two, two, three. Two, two, three. One, five is closed procedure. And then the 18 we don't have. Well, that makes it a whole lot easier for sure. Hey, Kim, how's it going? Oh, my stomach is just growling. We had candy left over from the, um, Halloween jar today for lunch. It's so bad. We had fun cleaning out that shed and garage, though. It was a mess. I forgot to reply to Mr. Hobby Lobby Man. You don't think I forgot about him? Well, I did. I don't want him to know about that, though. <laughs> Okay, had to get something to drink. Quiet down the belly. All right. Two, two, three, one, five is where we're going. Hmm. 42 millimeter cannulated lag screw advanced into the body oh sounds horrifying would not want to go there for that at all Hit picks. Out of these, out of these, what I would pick is B and D since they're both in the J sections, right? So we have two J's. First one is J7301. And then 06. 06 was on my CPC exam. So we've got an implant, and then 01 is a system. Interuterine. So interuterine or an implant system. And we'll just look at our. Question, we do have an implant, which is my 06, which I had on my exam. Let me get my thingy. Maybe this will work. 
Is that going to work? Yay! Yeah, then I don't have to use my mouse. I was trying to get it to where my fingers would scroll. There we go. We can scroll now. You're going too far, mister. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> Now I can't control it. Where are you going to? We're not going to go that far. It's time to do some more hip picks, though. Let's not, let's not go too far away from those hip picks. Because we don't ever get to do those. Do I have any more here? Ooh, I do. Okay, here's another one. Well, we have two Q's and two A's, so nothing we can do but go to both and see if we're in the right area. So A4570. A45. Seventy and eighty. Is a splint and a cast. So we have we definitely don't have a splint, so we can get rid of the 70 for sure. Ooh! No, 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 don't go that far. Where are we at? Oh, Lord. Okay, let me get back down here to the... This is not helpful. All right. All the way back down here. Just going to have to use the mouse. I'm not that coordinated to use a little drawing pen. So this is a cast, and it does say short fiber gloss arm. And this one, the 80. This one says plaster, right? We're not in plaster. We're under fiberglass. So, I don't think it's either one of those. So, we're going to have to go to the Q's. All right. So, Q40 is 12 is the first one. So, let's go there. Q. So, if it doesn't fit, don't force it. Just keep going as fast as you can. Q40. Q4012. Over here. Hey, over here. Q4012 short arm cast fiberglass. And it goes by age. Are we there? Yep. So everything's matching. We'll pick A and go with that one. Got any more? Got any more? No, only two. Only two. Let's see. A person with this disease or inflammation is where? Even though I got stuff on my screen. <laughs> where is that? out of these four. Sinus, you know, you think rhine, I see the rhinitis, you know, so I'm thinking A2, yeah, I'm thinking, I think sinuses, so ear, ear is a good kind of place near it. Um, 
could be of the eye you know you're kind of close but it's definitely of the inner ear that's a good one angiogram looks inside what angiogram is that reproductive urinary blood vessels or breast yep blood vessels for sure thoracentesis see how they're making you chest cavity lung or thoracic vertebrae so they're trying to get you to play on that word Thor right there but we're removing fluid from where is it a chest cavity or is it a lung you're not going to remove any fluid from a vertebrae and you definitely don't want to remove any fluid from a heart so think of it that way yeah we got lung what does that mean is it a deficiency blood urine or oses it's a deficiency don't does not have very many swimmers yep another term for aka reduction i've told y'all a million times it's manipulation of course all right let's see here's another one how about that one i'm not even going to try to pronounce it <laughs> it's an inflammation because we've got our itis you know itis means inflammation of which system yep don't forget urinary is so gloom is what i say i'm so gloomy when i have to go to the bathroom i don't like it especially if i'm out in public i like to use my own <laughs> all right here's another one we've got 0303 and then 15 and 15. So we'll have to look up both to see what we're doing here. I know, right? This makes me all gloomy and grumpy. And COVID did not help that at all because it's like, oh God, I'm so infected now if I have to go into a public room from the door handles to everything else. All right. 93303. Oh, way back here. 933. 933. One of my one of my boys is gone and that house is like dead silent. Only one's gone. Two of them are here. Husband's at work, but geez, how quiet the house gets when one kid is gone. Lord, I have my bed door open and everything. Just the whole house is just so quiet. 93303. And I don't have to check on anybody and yell at nobody. It's crazy. This is look at that I've got notes here that says if it's with interpretation you need to add the modifier 26 to this one so I've been here before and if you got my notes you have that info too so we're definitely going to probably end up using notes. Does it say something about 
a report was generated and sent C so you're definitely going to get rid of C and A and D I mean we're going to keep here 03 and 15 the two differences are 15 is transpharyngeal and then O3 is transthoric. Got it ick at the end. Is it going to tell us what the name of the thing is? It's just saying we're doing an echo. Echocardiogram. A probe was placed. So it's not actually telling you. It's just describing the procedure. Chest wall images, echocardiogram. Yep, echocardiogram. But I'm wondering how do we know about transthoracic versus transpharyngeal? So obvious chest walls because that would be you know where the pharyngeal would be coming in at right that's why they have this picture here but when you're doing it through the chest wall you're going to have the thoracic right there no picture but this is going to go in in a different location right and this does say that they sedated the kid and they put placed on the chest wall. Probe was placed there. It wasn't passed through the pharyngeal. So we know C is going to be our answer for this one. Sorry, I know sometimes y'all can't see when it's way low on the picture. Hopefully that makes sense. Google means you should memorize nothing. <laughs> well, for the CPC exam, you can't use Google unless you get hmm, if you take the test in person and you have a hidden phone in your back pocket I don't know where you put it but I guess somebody would see it in your back pocket but you'd have to have one completely silent and hmm I don't know where you put it but potty breaks would be the only location now if you take it from home I recently found out you can get an ADA um, And be able to take potty breaks even if you split your test up and only do it once every two out you know two hours the first time god phone and then three hours and then two hours the next time too but if you get a note from your doctor saying you might need to go to the bathroom you can have potty breaks at home while you're taking your exam and you know it's going to cut down you only have 120 seconds per question and if you're going to be taking potty breaks to go google questions and answers it's going to slow you down and you're going to end up not being able to finish the exam but one potty break wouldn't hurt nobody and you know if you had three things on a list of things you wanted to go google real quick and there's a will there's a way but you need to get an ADA so that you can take potty breaks if you're going to take your test at home. But in the real test in person, you can go to the bathroom all you want. Um, they just expect you to not have a phone. And Lord help you if you get caught in a bathroom and your phone's clicky, click, click, click. You know, if they can hear you hitting buttons and something, somebody tells on you, Lord, you be it kicked out so that'd be very stressful 
but nobody's going to follow you in the home <laughs> and be a hall monitor for that. All right. This is a cochlear implant. So we've got the 01, 03, and 06 there. So probably that 62 is out of whack, right? So I'd run to the 926, so we're backwards. 926. 926.01. I wouldn't doubt it. Destiny, you saw that question on the phone, on the exam? We've got 01, 03, and 04. Our differences are patients younger than seven and older than seven. How old is our patient? Patient is 10. So we can get rid of 01 based off of just the age requirement here. Where's my mouse? All right, 01 can get rid of. So it's just gonna be a difference between three and four. And then the differences between those is reprogramming or programming. She is just doing programming. She's not doing reprogramming. So B is going to be your answer. Just getting it on and turned on. The one that I had on my CPC exam was more of an... Um, Oh, that's for a different one. That's on page 737. I didn't put an example of a cochlear on this one. I just highlighted it because that one was on my CPC exam, and that was the answer that I picked, which was probably this question. Using the exams, using ebooks during your CPC exam? Is that what she's asking? Hmm.
cannot get my phone to open this correctly. I don't know why. I have the Proctor's instructions here. I've not seen anybody be able to use online books for their exam. It's always been the paper copies, as far as I know. It may have come along one of these days unless, but I doubt it. I haven't seen anything like that. So we've got 30 and 30 and then 35 and 35. We've got some of the same diagnosis codes and then two different here. So I'm thinking the differences will be the C and the D. But let's go look at 975. 975. Nine seven five three zero. Three zero and three five. This is therapeutic activities for direct one on one. This is self care management. So, what are we doing with this patient right here? See your key term right there, self-care. This one was self-care is 3-5. So we're definitely keeping 3-5. We can get rid of 30. Any answer with that one in it? So it's going to be either B and D. They already do the times 3, so you don't have to worry about that. What we're going to need to know is if we are going to be doing G or an I. This patient has right here, oops, this diagnosis, um, on the dominant side, whichever. If it doesn't say which is the dominant side, you always assume right according to the guideline or guideline instructions. This should only require one diagnosis. If you're looking right here, we, we don't need to do, this is only one diagnosis. If you're just skimming the note anyway, um, the due to CVA, and they could possibly diagnose them with a history of, but, um, that would be a Z code and they don't have that down. So you, you can foresee that this is gonna be just D anyway. And this one actually has the CVA included in the diagnosis. Ooh, da, da, da. Come on. Come on. That one diagnosis does have that in it due to a CVA. So it's all together as one. So you would definitely use D as your answer. 
This is really, what I like about the ICD-10, if you've ever noticed the differences between the codes, they highlight them and change them for you. So if this is right, left, right, left, they're not different colored, which I would prefer doing different colors for rights and different colors for left. Um, but they do note what the differences are on a lot of these, especially um, unless it's unspecified, which these all have following some sort of cerebrovascular disease, but the differences is attention and concentration. The difference is memory defect. It, I wish they did this kind of stuff to the CPT book. It would cut down on our prep time for this exam if, I mean, it's all black. There's no differentiating between the codes or highlighting anything like they do in the ICD-10. Why? What's the difference? Why can't you, you can change ink color, apparently. You do it in one book, why not do it in the other? Um, one little thing I like to fuss about when I go through that book. For sure. I've had some students say that their proctoring site has books for them, ICD-9, ICD-10, but it's mostly overseas companies that are providing um, sites for them to take an exam, but they're still taking the exam in a different country to be certified as a CPC through AAPC, but they provide books on site during the exam for them to take the exam with, and they're not marked. They're not their own books. They're just plain, regular, current year books to take the exam, but I've never, I've never heard of them doing it in a, in the United States that way, so but it's also a question you can ask. Um, they may provide you with books on site if you needed books to take your exam. The problem is nothing will be marked up. You won't have any notes. You won't be able to add anything to it and you won't be able to fix the sequencing issue where a lot of these codes are out of sequencing. You need to put the page numbers down so you don't have to look up between ranges of codes to look up stuff or find a chart somewhere to go find the code. It could be a nightmare. Um, and you can't fix that and put the page numbers down if you don't have your own book to mark up. So those kind of things would drive me nuts during the exam. Not that you can't pass that way, but this gives you um, a better chance. Some of these codes are, you know, 800 pages away from each other where they should be and where they are so um, it would be crazy but maybe some sites will um, loan you a book for you to use but I guarantee it'll probably be blank and not fixed don't know never hurts to ask and if they give you an option to buy and I know AAPC does that they give you a bundle to buy that is just electronic or just paper books or and then there's an option to buy both why would they give you that option if they're not going to let you use them during the exam I don't know I don't know maybe they do I don't know it's not something I've run into most people have the um, book by the time they Come to me and they're already ready to take their exam or they failed their first attempt and want help to pass this one it's real helpful to mark your parenthetical notes when you're supposed to use modifiers so you don't forget and it's also important to mark your do nots and do's 
in your parenthetical notes too. Um, the do nots will keep you coding correctly. Some of these, like this one, that goes from 20900 all the way through 938 affects 38 codes. Will they tell you right before the section? So it's not underneath the codes where it should be. So you need to make sure you write this at the top of all these pages around those codes so that you don't use that modifier for those codes since they're not telling you in the parenthetical notes directly underneath the codes. So O238, you can write it up here, no, mod 62 from the 209 through 20938, which is this whole page right here on 143 and part of the page on 142 and then you'll have three codes right here that are no mod 62 and I guarantee you one of the test questions if they use that any one of these codes we'll end up having a modifier 62 on it as a possible answer because they're going to think you don't know it because it's not going to be here in the parenthetical notes near the codes because they put it in the instructions before you coded it. So sometimes they're just really tricky on the things that they pick for this AAPC exam. So. Don't let them fool you as much as possible. Let's try to keep our notes consistent or to add in what we need to add. No mod dash 62. There we go. Because it'll go from these codes all the way down. And then this whole page and then three codes on the next page and it won't be noted in the parenthetical notes and then you might miss that if you didn't have that added into your notes so hopefully that's helpful here yeah you can do a much easier search on the ebooks um, the ebooks are cool. They do come with a little education, little class to go with them. I didn't. I watched the first page and didn't wasn't impressed, so I haven't paid much attention to that. But this bookshelf Vita Source. Y'all, don't look at all the tabs I have open. <laughs> My computer has got to be crazy. They, the, sometimes it's weird though. Like if you go, like this is the CPT for 2022. You go up here to um, E&M and you go there and you want to look at all of E&M. Well, it's here, and you think you've got all the codes, but it only goes to 9423. Well, you have to click this over button to find the rest of these codes that are under all these. And then now I've gotten to the 9499. So it it's a little weird. 
I, li I like, I, I miss, you know, I like having my, my all pink and red section and I know every code's there. You think you've got them all when you click on a particular section, but I'm like, I just want all of E&M. You know, everything that's underneath this particular heading right there. I want everything that's underneath here. Whatever all that is, I want it all. But they don't show you all the way to page 74 or 76 where anesthesia comes. You have to, you only get the first 54 pages and then it just seems weird. I just, if you click on a heading, I should get everything on this one whole thing. But I don't unless you kick through it. So you got to play around with this to really um, learn all the pages. And then if you are on Blackboard. When you get the ebooks and you go over to my courses, your ebooks come with a course. So, um, what was I at? I was at CPT. Let's hit pics. CPT comes with a course. Like you get a book lecture. <laughs> it's not much of a lecture, but I mean, it comes with stuff. Welcome to AAPC's training on how to use the CPT code book. It's, you know, eh. And then you do have a test, and then you can do a course survey, but you can click to begin and start taking some sort of test. <laughs> um, there is course material. That's it. And then you can get graded on it, too, so it's funny. <laughs> I didn't even bother, but if you watch that video or whatever, it's, it's, it's so beyond, training beyond have a boring understanding of how to, how to use the book. It says, I can't this training show, share CPT, this with you, but the CPT, the CPT code book has instructions and conventions. The <sighs> use of modifiers is specific to CPT coding. They are used to report when a procedure or service has been altered by a specific circumstance. Some examples include increased procedural services, bilateral procedures, or the presence of a co-surgeon. Modifiers may also be used to comply with payer policy requirements. It's important to note the use of symbols in the CPT codebook. These are invaluable in identifying information required for correct coding and reporting. Where the symbol definitions can be found will be reviewed later in the training. Like, it's not even talking to a person like they're a real person and like you could know what they're talking about and understand. They don't show you where they are in the book. It doesn't give you any screenshots. It just says vaguely what modifiers are used for and then moves on to symbols and says something about stupid symbols. Doesn't show you any of them. Doesn't clarify what they are. Doesn't point it out in the book. I just feel like, wow, if if somebody really needed to and learn something from this, if they knew nothing, it's, it's so unhelpful. We are now ready to take a tour of the CPT codebook. <laughs> Feel free to follow along in your own codebooks. Anyway, I just, I just, yeah, decided not to do it. There, um, you can click this menu over here on the side and you can skip through. You can, they do have the history of it and they do have some case examples. Let's use the CPT codebook to code a few case examples. Take a moment to review this first case example, paying particular attention to the possible main terms or subterms. Click next to continue. So key terms, like I tell y'all, word search, right? What be our word search here? We've got lesion. Parts. So we're looking at extremities. We've got upper and lower extremities. 
we've got punch biopsies and a lesion. So you're going to code your lesion first, then you'll do your punch biopsies. Let's use the steps we reviewed earlier in the training to code our first Looky case there. example. Looky there, punch biopsies, punch In box. our first step, we need to determine the main term. We know the main terms used in the CPT index are common procedural terms, organs or anatomical sites, a condition, or a synonym, eponym, or abbreviation. Eponym. The what? intent of this procedure is to perform a biopsy of the suspicious skin lesion. Biopsy is our main term. Subterms are usually the location or type of procedure performed. In this case, the location is the skin and the type a punch biopsy. Click next to view a tutorial on how to code these procedures. Our main term is biopsy. Our appropriate subterms are skin lesion and punch. We are directed to codes 11104 and 11105. More often than not, the index will provide a code range rather than a single CPT code. This makes step two even more important. In our second step, we need to turn to the numerical section of the CPT codebook to determine the correct code from the range provided by the index. Turning to 11104, we can read the code description. Punch biopsy of skin, including simple closure when performed single lesion. This represents the punch biopsy described in the documentation. We can also determine the closure should not be coded separately as it is included in the main definition of the procedure. Our second step includes reviewing all guidelines, conventions, <laughs> symbols, and references. Let's start by reviewing oh, the guidelines at the beginning of the subsection. Like you could do These any of this during the exam. But for the sake of time, we will point out those specific to our case example. Namely, a simple closure of the defect is included in the service. And when multiple biopsy techniques are performed during the same encounter, only one primary lesion biopsy code, 11102, 11104, 11106, is reported. Additional biopsy codes should be selected based on the following convention. If multiple biopsies of the same type are performed, the primary code for that biopsy should be used along with the corresponding add-on codes. We can also read, when two or more biopsies of the same technique, i.e. punch for our case, are performed on separate slash additional lesions, use the... Okay, is this helpful or do y'all want to move on? <laughs> I never paid much attention to this and didn't... It's just not feasible for a CPC exam. If you're trying to learn to code, it's okay. But if y'all aren't, if y'all are interested, I'll let it run, let it, let it move, let it, let it, let it play. But yeah, that's what this comes with. If you do get the online, it's interesting, but it's not helpful for the CPC exam, for sure. I bring up my exam again. That we can continue on working out some more questions here. Let me find one that's all on one page like this one. I like this one. Probably not one here that we can eliminate. We, Since they're all in the same area, we need to just go to the first one in the sequence and go to 77075 and see what the differences are here. Place this back. 7-7, seven, seven. we're in the back, back. Seven, seven, oh, seven, five. We're here, we're underneath bone and joint studies. 
And what we're doing is a CT study for osteoporosis on the spine. So this is on the axle and appendicular skeleton. Is that going to be the spine? We've got 75. We've got 80 for the hips, pelvis, and spine. We've got 78, which is a CT. For one or more sites. And then 81 is underneath. These are DEXAs. 75 is under radiology, radiologic exam for like x-ray. The only CT I have in my bundle is the 78. So just having these marked in your book to know that this one is an x-ray, the very top one, the 78, which I don't have noted there, is an x-ray. This one's CT and these are DEXAs. When your test question asks you specifically for a CT, oh, come on, come on, camera. Oops, oops, oops. There we go. CT density. You can quickly pick out the right answer if you've got your book marked up. That's the only CT in our bundle. We had 80, 81. We had the, ninth, the 45, which is under that heading for radiology. So the only CT in this little snippet is that one right there. So it's super helpful if you go through these and anytime you have something like that you can mark. That's what I do. Um, this was a stress test. If it's diagnostic, I write it there. If it's just a screening, I write it there. If it's a foreign body removal, I put FB underneath the code. If it's a biopsy, I write a BX. DX for diagnostic. Those things can help you move through the exam a whole lot faster. I got somebody set a piece of pizza on my book. Nearly killed me. Diagnostic. Again, I've got foreign body there. Those kind of things can help you move through the exam a lot faster. Look at this one. We've got CT, MR, MR, fluoroscope, CT, MRI, X-ray. All those can help help you move through the exam a lot faster. If a procedure is unilateral or bilateral, I'll do little notes at the end so that I don't have to read the note. It says it, and I do underline them, but I like having the big circle with the big number because that just makes it so much easier and faster. If bilateral, use your modifier 50. Absolutely have that noted on 75756 if you're on page 530 of the book. This one doesn't tell you that in the parenthetical notes, but as I find out stuff like that, I'll add it to my notes so that y'all have it if y'all ever get the notes. Or I show them off in our lives like I'm doing now. If there's changes in imagings, how many there are, I'll add that in on the notes too. Something like that could be super helpful. If there's a difference between one letter, E-tubes from G-tubes, I don't have to read it. I've got it noted right there. 
on page, let's see, 234. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so if you got my notes, cardiology. Press and hold both oh. volume keys. Oh, no, 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 we don't want that. And then the other page in the back in medicine. Allergy injections. Some of those surgeries were really quite crazy the other day. That cardiology one where you don't code the entrance to the left. Oh my gosh. So, these branches of the heart are diagonal or marginal. And if they're diagonal, they're marked LD and LC. So, that'll be part of my notations here for some of the branches. We've got primary ve vessel base too and a hierarchy of vessels so if if you start out at the 92943 you know you're in the number one highest archy of the area of the heart and then you would move down when you go to the 41 code tried to put them in order of hierarchy and then the add-on branches afterwards according to the directions of the guidelines that are all of this mess that tell you about the hierarchy of the branches and the arteries and which one go from one area to another It's so, if you wanted to know where you are in the heart coming in, we've got them labeled as one, two, three, and four, right? Then you've got your C's and D's. Remember that over there with the diagonal and the marginal, the C is marginal, the LC's, the LD's are diagonal. So we've got those listed. <laughs> it gets so crazy, guys. It's, it's hard how it all meshes together, but if you wanted to know where you are at for that particular right here. If you were doing this bypass graft here for number two, you know you're going to be down here in the in the right ventricle because we've got the two listed down here. It's going to be one of the branches that comes off down there so that that could be just a little bit helpful plus these numbers also if you're here this is the 
seventh hierarchy. So it's not number one. You're not in the main branch. You're off into the hierarchy of the seventh area. Where is our number seven? And for the additional branches of the heart, the, the main things that y'all are going to be needing to know for cardiology isn't going to have to be coordinating these things. All you need to know is if you're doing an angio by itself. And that's the first block here. This is just angios. And your main thing that they're going to be talking about is doing an angiogram down the major artery. If they add additional branches to it, you'll have your add-on code and you'll do it times two, times three, if they do additional branches. These numbers don't affect you in that way in a, in a CPC test question. So don't stress over that too much. But it will help you when you're coding for real, for real, in real life. Because um, you're going to have bigger op notes in a real surgery situation, right? And you're going to be following along in branches to see where they're going and doing things. But a CPC test question is just going to be procedure type. Angios are just here. Angio with an added ectomy is going to be right here in this block up to the second code for it is right here for the additional branches the first branch and then additional branches now if they're doing stents in an angio so it's just this code basically and then they're going to add some stents that's what this block is for and that's what you'll need to know for the cpc exam if they're doing the angio stents and the arthectomy that's what this block is for now if they're doing all that and a cabbage you're going to be here if they're doing an occlusion your occlusion is going to be here and then if they're doing the occlusion with a PCI, you're going to be here. That's going to be the main things that they're going to discuss during the CPC exam. The one that I had on mine was the angio with the stents. And AAPC does love stents. They love it in the urinary system. And they love it in the cardiology system. This is going to be these codes, the 992. 92928-92929 are probably going to be where you're going to be at. If it's just an angio and stents, it's right here. If it's an angio with a A-T-H-E-R-O octomy with stents, it'll be this, these, the 92933 and the 34. This is where you need to know things for the CPC exam. We did have the occlusion in a more recent CPC exam. I believe it was one of our in-person exams. It was a single vessel it had an occlusion, and they did mention the initials, the PCI. It had those specific words right here, percutaneous transluminal revascularization of an acute occlusion during a heart attack. That one was the other one that I've seen or heard about before being on the exam was the 92941. But as far as the threes, the fives, the fours, the sixes, the sevens, it's just 
based off of the hierarchy of all these arteries and veins coming in and out and branching off through the heart. Which one's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, that kind of thing throughout the heart. You'll need it <clears throat> for real life coding, but for the CPC exam, you're just looking for key terms. And the key terms are going to be angio, that A T H E R O, and stents. If it's going to have a cabbage with the stents and the angio with the A T H E R O, and then any occlusion. Occlusion is going to be here and here, but out of these two sections, this one was the first one, and you're just matching up key terms. And I have this one underlined for the percutaneous. This one is acute, and this one is chronic. It's the only two differences between these two. If they say anything about an occlusion, and you're back here with these codes. This set is acute. This set is chronic. Only differences. Then you only need to know if you're doing one branch or multiple branches. One branch acute or multiple branches. That's all. You're welcome. And don't forget, you've got that one little note right here you need to know, which does a terrible job of explaining. But if you're in the coronary artery branches and you start out at the left, if your insertion says we're doing a coronary artery branch, we went in through the left, you you do not have to report the entrance of the procedure. You're only going to say which branches you put the stents in. We put the stents in a left branch, a right branch, and another left branch. So that would make this one and then this one times two. You don't need to do anything fancy with anything else. You're just going to code where you put the stents. There won't be an extra cardiology code from the front of the book that says we're doing an angiogram or anything. That little sentence is a pain. But it's okay. If you're coding stents, you only need to code where you're putting the stents. What branch? So if there's three stents, even if that branch has multiple stents in it, you're only doing that code for what branch you're in. Even if there's 10 stents in it, it's only that one. Then if you move to another branch and you do five more stents, it's that code. And then if you move to another branch and you do one more stent, it'll be times two. Cardiology is a nightmare to try to explain without visuals, without something to look for or touch or feel. But um, you can put as many stints in it as you want. The only differences in these codes is that I move to another branch. Move to another branch. I did another branch. Did another branch. Everybody's been doing really well with cardiology. Maybe missing one to two in cardiology. I've explained um, about the cabbages. Cabbages are super easy. 
it's just Venus and that takes care of all these cabbages you just need to know if it's a Venus cabbage and then how many graphs did they do one two three four five the other cabbage that they do is a combination arterial and venous then all you need to know is is it single graft two graphs three graphs four graphs that's it the last cabbage they have is just a plain artery graft then all you need to know is it's single double triple quad that's it so just be looking for those key terms anytime you see a cabbage just look to see where you're at venous or venous and artery or just artery and then find out how many graphs you're doing super easy to code those maybe that'll fix some of the ones that were um, difficult but people have been passing the odd numbers like of these sections seems like the odd numbers are easier than the even sections for some reason for everybody recently on their exams trying to see if there's anything else it was super important before anybody else's in cardiology so that you got a few that you need to fix the out of sequences for um, If you're just dealing with a vein or if you're just dealing with an artery sometimes there's a difference and it's clear but it's in the description so it's easier just to write it in that box so that you don't have to read the description and decipher it during the middle of the exam these are all veins here when we move to the next page they're arteries that kind of thing is helpful but nobody's having a lot of trouble with cardiology. They seem to, it's digestion they're having a problem with. It's an even number, you know, it starts with the four. Um, the intigmentary, no, this is muscular skeletal. Muscular skeletal, intigmentary they're doing well in. Muscular skeletal they're having issues with. Digestion. And then the nervous system. Again, another one that starts with an even number. Those seem to be the lower areas for some reason. Kind of interesting there. Not sure why, but I think it's interesting that the even numbers are lower in scores. Hmm. Anything else anybody wants to look at? before we call it a night I set up a event on TikTok for Saturday there's a Saturday coming up at 9 a.m. my local chapter is going to be having a webinar where they're going over the new ICD-10 um, guidelines and new codes and new information going out and I'll broadcast the um, event because um, they'll have a guest speaker to come talk and I'll live back broadcast it and we'll do a live after it um, it'll be 9 a.m. Arizona time zone and that'll be cool I get I think one and a half CEUs for my continuing education for participating in it. Um, so it'll be real educational since they're giving out that many CEUs. They're giving out more than one. So not much more than one, but they are giving out one. Some more unilateral and bilateral procedures. So 
if it's bilateral in the code, then you don't need to add. It says report with a modifier 52 if they did less than four salivary glands. Very interesting. I love it when they put in there when to use the modifier. It is going to be November. <laughs> My cat. Let's see. There's an event on TikTok. So when we're off the live, I'm sure it'll say. Oh, the 13th. It's going to be on the 13th at 9 a.m. Uh, right here. So it's going to be chapter update on the 2022 CM. Coding pain? Is it coding pain? Or how coding is a pain? <laughs> I wonder. It's um, it's the ICD-10 updates and coding roundtable. This Cheryl lady who is a CRC, CPC? She's a CPC with an auditor, a COSC whatever all the other initials are, she is going to be doing it there. And it'll be a Zoom, and I'll broadcast it. And I get not one and a half, but 1.25, really, um, CEUs for that one. So we'll, we'll participate in that. That way we can have that. Did y'all notice there is... Where did it go? We have the newsletter for November. They have something that they call It's the weirdest name too. Mentor City. So I guess if you go there, there's going to be I got to fill out the form. I haven't registered for that, but there is a city, <laughs> a city of mentors there that you can sign up for the program and stuff. It was in our newsletter for November this year, so I thought that was interesting. And then they have gathered $100,000 in their hardship fund. So if anybody wanted to apply, to even just to get free books... They have money now donated and in their system. You can click on that and fill out the application for that. They're going up $10 a year on their memberships. <sighs> what else are they doing? I have a report on life after COVID. And some CEUs. Their CEUs are super expensive too. I like just doing the free ones because some of them are getting pretty pricey. That one's $49 or $69 for one CEU. That's crazy when you need so many every year. But anyway. I like it when they give out the free ones, so I try to participate on all those at least because they've got enough money from me already with all this other stuff. I know we've got some people taking the CPC exam today. I hope it went well for sure. And then we've got some more coming up next weekend. I cannot wait. I hope everybody passes. We will have another class or two hour live here on TikTok on Monday at six o'clock. Arizona time zone, which should be 
sooner for you guys because we're going to move our clocks back, right? We don't in Arizona, but we just stay the same time zone. But everybody else is going to come back so that if you're on the East Coast, it won't be three hours later. It'll just be two hours. So that won't be as bad. How many CEUs do you need every year? It it sort of changes. Um, for your first year, I think I had to do like 12. Now, right now, I just need 36 for two years. So after you've been a CPC for a while, they switch you over to a two-year program where it's 36 for two years. They give away 12 a year free. So that's 24. And then if you watch their webinars, they do one a quarter. So that's four, that's eight more a year. So eight. 24 plus 8 is 30. You're getting close. You're 32. So if you participate in just a couple of more um, webinars that are free, usually from your local chapter, wherever you're from, mine's Vegas, even though I live in Arizona, they're just the local, the closest one I have because they're still two and a half hours away from me. But Phoenix chapter is five hours away from me. So if I watch a couple of theirs, which they do monthly, usually something, um, then you've got your 36 in two years. I'm already, it just started in August of 2021, and I've already gotten a bunch of them, um, seven of them entered. But the easiest ones are the monthly magazines. And then I've already participated in a webinar uh, for the OB um, obstetrics that I got one and a half for. And then the rest are from the monthly magazine that they give you uh, every month. And you can put those in there. I need to do, I did, what month? September. So I need to do um Octobers and Novembers and then that'll give me two more but this tracker is pretty cool the weird thing is you can add them but you can't hit submit until you got them all done all 36 and then you can't submit until 7 1 of 23 even if I get all 36 done before then, you got to remember to come back in here and hit that submit button the month that they're all due. <laughs> and um, you can't submit them ahead of time. And don't do next year's. Like if I get all 36, I need to stop. Don't put any more in your tracker because they won't count for the next year year coming up you'll just have to eat them like it'll take them away and then won't let you save them for the next time um so for the monthly magazines i go on and write my answers down for those because it's 20 questions but i make sure that i get one question wrong and keep it wrong but then go on and find the answers for the other 19 and then i have them written down in a notebook and then once the new year starts, like this one, because my new year started 8 one But if you look through here, I did on 8 I did April's. And then I also did June's. And then I also did May's. And then I did July's because I had already had all my stuff done and was just waiting for my new year to click over to add the new one. So I just had the answers written down ahead of time and then went and uh, eventually took those exams. 
and you get unlimited free retakes for these little exams for these free monthly ones so you can take it as many times as you need to until you get it all correct and it's um a b c or d so you know you can just go through the entire test and mark a for everything and then hit submit and then hit b for everything and then hit c and then hit d if you don't want to read anything and eventually you'll figure out which ones are a b c and d you just write the answers down make sure every time you submit that you make sure that you know one of them is wrong because once you get it right and it's 100 percent, it automatically generates you a um, certificate and submits it here so just keep one wrong and that's it just squirrel your answers and then once your new year turns over then you can submit but and don't submit any more than just the 36 because they will not count for the next year but 36 for two years so not too bad there all right guys i'm gonna get off here and um we will be in our chat room all day tomorrow we will be practicing for sure in chat tomorrow i have lots of things i want to throw in for um question and answers like this i've got some practice ones up that we'll be doing tomorrow in chat throughout the day so hopefully i will see y'all there if anybody wants to join our chat just come find me at jen brewer on messenger I can add you in. I know I've got some requests here. I've got to click into to see who is wanting to be added that I've ignored all day, but I will get to you. I promise. I was just cleaning out garages and shed today and uh, definitely can tell I did not eat enough today. I need to go eat. My brain is not working anymore today. So anyway, sorry. It was just a slow little Tiki Talk Live today, but I will be better off tomorrow, and then Monday for sure we will have a rocking Tik Toky Live that will go over more of what has been on people's exams because I've got people taking it this weekend. Hopefully, I'll get some more suggestions what to add to our exam sheet what's on exam a b c and d maybe we'll get some more vocabulary words i can add in and get those added to our little cheat sheet and share that info with you guys okay reach out to everybody that took it this weekend see if they remembered any little thing off their exam and we will discuss it on monday's live i will see you then guys hey Ange.